we took a week-long break from the Wurtz trial to prepare for and subsequently clean up after Tropical Storm Irma. So what did we miss during that time? When we left off on September 8th, the judge advocate and the court were reviewing documents that were official correspondence between Wurtz and Confederate officials. Those documents revealed that Wurtz was asking for more supplies and telling higher ranking Confederate officials that the prison was too crowded. On September 9th, we heard a testimony from Confederate Lieutenant Colonel Chandler. Chandler did an inspection of Andersonville during the summer of 1864. And he didn't blame the horrid conditions of the prison on Wirtz, but instead on General John Winder. In fact, Chandler made several suggestions to Winder on how to improve conditions of Andersonville, all of which were ignored. Five men testified on September 11th, one of which was Felix de la Blume. Felix was 26 years old when he entered the prison at Andersonville and was quickly paroled to work in the prison hospital, where he was able to get a pretty good view of prison operations from the outside. He had one of the most detailed testimonies so far, giving specific dates and names to the cruelties caused by Wurtz against prisoners. On September 12th, Reverend William John Hamilton took the stand for the prosecution. Or was it for the defense? The records show that the court called Hamilton forth to testify, yet his testimony lined in favor for Wirtz, saying that Wirtz was welcoming any help that they could have for the prisoners. However, his testimonies of the conditions of the prison lined up pretty close to the testimonies before him. Upon meeting of the court on September 13th, the judge advocate received a letter from the superintendent of the Old Capitol Prison in which Wirtz was being held awaiting trial. The letter said that Wirtz was too ill to appear in court, that he was suffering from a nervous prostation, and so the court agreed to adjourn until September 19th. We have five weeks left of the Wirtz trial. And during that time, we're going to hear more testimonies from prisoners, clergy, and even women. But so far, from the testimonies that we've heard, do you think it makes Wirtz guilty of the charges before him? Do you think the court needs to review the charges and specifications? Let us know what you think by using the hashtag Wirtz Trial.